These men were trying to build themselves a promised land. A land deep in Siberia, they'd been told, would become the world's first Jewish state. They're the founders of Russia's Jewish autonomous region. In the late 1920s, Jews from across the Soviet Union headed to the Russian Far East. They brought their families and set up schools which taught Yiddish and Jewish traditions. It took years of hard labor, but they built themselves a capital city. It's called Birabajan. It's taken us about three hours, but we finally made it to Birabajan's main train station. And it's not difficult to tell that we're in the capital of the Jewish autonomous region. If you're based in Moscow, this is some trip. We traveled 6,000 kilometers and crossed seven time zones to get here. And that was before our final train leg. Once we'd recovered, it was easy to see that we'd come to a place full of character. This is a city that's especially proud of its immigrant past. There are around 200,000 people in the region, and despite the fact that only 2% of them are actually Jewish, I was about to find out that old or young, all of Birabajan shares a love of Jewish culture, and especially music. Monuments celebrating the arts are everywhere, and the sculptors haven't left any doubt about their Jewish connection. Authors are also held in high regard, and right in the center of the city, on a street that bears his name, there's a statue to a particularly important cultural icon. This is the only area in Russia where they still speak and study Yiddish, and where this man's work is still an inspiration. That's Shalom Malehim, probably the most famous Yiddish writer of them all, and it was from his poetry that they got the film and the musical Fiddler on the Roof. And music is at the heart of a cultural program organized by the Jewish Community Center. Alongside its charity work for the city's poor, it puts on shows and sponsors Jewish singing groups. And luckily, I just happened to be passing at the right time to check out the rehearsals of one of Birabajan's most popular quartets. And they kindly invited me to watch them at work. The group are called All Together, and they compete in folk music competitions all over the country. They sing plenty of Russian classics, but their favorite songs are inspired by their hometown. Much of their repertoire is written and conducted by musical director Naum Levant, a man who draws heavily on his Jewish roots. Jewish melodies differ from other melodies because of the fate of Jewish people. All the melodies are a little sad, a little joyful, a little ironic, because the Jewish people are the most ironic people. And this makes Jewish music different. It's a tradition that's fully embraced by members of the community center's Golden Age Club, who are never shy about striking up a tune or two especially if they're expecting visitors. Alongside its charity work, the organization also acts as a cultural and social center for many people in Birabajan. And it sounds like there might just be a party going on. These ladies come here once a week to chat, share needlework tips, and occasionally sing for the odd visiting journalist. The meetings are all good fun but they've also become a crucial part of their Jewish identity. Shalom. 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 This place seems very special for you all. Can you tell me how much of a difference being part of the community center has made to you? We'd forgotten what Jewish meant, it was killed in us. But since we started attending this club, we've become familiar with the traditions. We've started communicating. It's changed our lives. The weather is good. Tomorrow we'll bring the concrete blocks, and I want you to put them here, cover them with earth. 
Just as Birabajan's community centre is changing the lives of the town's Jews, one man is helping change the face of the city itself. Josef Brenner is one of its biggest housing developers. He's lived in Birabajan all his life and says he'd never leave. And his employees are equally passionate. One even gave up a life in sunny Israel because he missed his favourite pastime. My children had left and I followed them. I came back in a year because there was no winter fishing. Fishing is a good rest for me. Then I came back again. I feel it at home here and like a guest there. For Josef, nowhere else will do. Aside from being a property tycoon, he's also a serious Biribijan historian. And he offered to give me a tour. Josef has written a book about the city and was more than happy to point out the main sites and fill me in on their stories. He's got more than half a century of memories and before long we ended up in his very favourite spot, the place where he first heard the Yiddish language. This square was the most interesting place in Birobidjan in the 1950s. There were old men and women gathering here. The old women spoke Yiddish and I started to understand it. And I think this is from here where my Yiddish proceeds. Yosef's book took him more than 10 years to write. It tells the story of Birobidjan from its earliest days and has dozens of tales from his youth memories of times gone by, and period photographs. There's a picture of the main high street from the 1930s, and even one of the very road next to the square we were standing on. There have been a few changes on this street since the old days of Birabijan. The traffic comes the other way now, and that building certainly wasn't there before. But some things have stayed the same. That building was a shop 70 years ago, and it still is today. Another Birabajan symbol that survived the decades is the city's local newspaper, the Birabajan Stern. It still has a section in Yiddish and a strong focus on Jewish issues. Vladislav Sap has been its cartoonist for 12 years. Although he does cover serious news stories, his favorite work has always been drawing famous Jewish characters and illustrating Jewish anecdotes. He's a bit of an expert on Yiddish humour, and he's even co-authored a rather special paperback. It was a big seller in China, but that meant it wasn't exactly an easy read for me. Well, we have a slightly unusual situation of a book of Jewish humour that's printed in Chinese that we've had to translate into English, so I hope this works. A Jewish grandma and her grandson are walking on the beach. Suddenly, out of nowhere, a huge wave comes along, sweeps the little boy out to sea. Grandma falls to her knees, prays to God, please, please, bring back my grandson. I'll do anything, anything at all if you'll just bring him back. Wait a few seconds. Then suddenly another wave comes along, deposits the little boy back on the beach, wet but otherwise unharmed. Grandma looks at the little boy, looks back to the sky and says, what? You couldn't bring back his hat too? Shalom Aleichem. Aleichem Shalom. Probably best to leave the Jewish comedy to the experts. But I did want to get to grips with the city's native language. And what better place to do it than a Yiddish course at the local university? But before anything else, I needed to learn how to introduce myself. James, repeat after me, please. Ich bin James. Ich bin von England. Shalom Aleichem. Ich bin James. Ich bin von England. There are virtually no native Yiddish speakers left in Birabijan, but this college is helping to train a new generation. The course has been going since the fall of the Soviet Union, and it's still popular. Students spend five years here, and many have gone on to become teachers themselves or to find work in the region. Thank you. See you tomorrow. Yiddish is ever going to become my second language. But that's a distinct possibility for the children who go to Birabijan Sunday School. Every week they have a program of lessons including Jewish history and traditions. Although they don't exactly have a traditional warm-up. 
Once they get to class, though, it's straight down to business. The teachers here are all passionate about Yiddish, and they volunteer at the school for free. They hope that these early tutorials will encourage the children and give the language the chance of a real future. Today's subject is the Yiddish alphabet, and the children take it in turns to write and repeat the various letters. But language training is only one part of the curriculum, and the children seem more than happy to give up part of their weekend for extra lessons. There will be a lot of help if I choose to become an interpreter or decide to go to Israel for studies. We learn about ways to celebrate our holidays and about food for each festivity. We also read prayers sometimes. But it's not all work and no play for Berebizhan's young people. Matvey performs in a Jewish singing group. He just also happens to be a big fan of the French free-running sport parkour. Now, singing the Jewish classics is all well and good, but when he's not in the concert hall, Matt Vey does like to indulge in something a little less traditional. I'm not actually Jewish, but as they say here in this region, you might not be Jewish, but you must live the Jewish way. It's a joke, of course, but it struck root. I attended a Jewish school where we were taught Yiddish and Hebrew, and we were even able to mix with some guys from Israel. And whatever religion you are, if you're in Birabijan on a Friday or Saturday night, there's only one place that everyone mixes. This is the city's best nightclub, and you need to get here early to pick out the perfect place on the dance floor. I wasn't prepared to take Matt Vey on in a dance-off, but then he mentioned the club had a pool hall. He did say he was a bit of an expert, but I was feeling pretty confident. So, and that's our pool. That's pool. Now this, I reckon I can beat you. Unfortunately, it turned out that he wanted to play Russian billiards, and that's a whole different ball game. I'm sure those pockets are way too small. Come on. Uh, sometimes we have a Jewish party here. Uh, there are DJs from Israel. For most of the next hour, I was standing around watching that fake clear up. And my best of three challenge quickly became a best of five. But while he was taking me to the cleaners, I learned that the Jewish influence in Birabajan even extends inside these walls. There are lots of special parties here, like birthdays, New Year's celebrations, and of course Jewish parties, as you'd expect in this region. We invite DJs from Israel, Jewish music is played, and we celebrate all the Jewish feasts. And even I had something to celebrate, in the end. I'd seen a lot of the secular side of Jewish life in Birabajan, but many of the city's Jews are also rediscovering their relationship with God. During the atheist times of the Soviet Union, many stopped their religious rituals altogether. But since this new synagogue was built in 2004, more and more have been returning to the fold. It was open to mark the 70th anniversary of the Jewish Autonomous Region, and the city's religious Jews now have a beautiful place to pray and a devout rabbi to follow. Most of the men here are elderly, but young faces are also making an appearance. Ten years ago, Ilya emigrated to Israel and was so moved by the experience that he risked his life for the country. I was attending a, a yeshiva, a religious school, Later, I was in the army for three years and directly participated in all conflicts. After the army, I came back here to live as before. But there are literally thousands of Birabajan Jews who have stayed in Israel. After the collapse of communism, many took the chance to emigrate for the first time and headed straight for their spiritual home. But even if you take the lady out of the city, 
You can't take the city out of the lady. Faina is a concert pianist, and this is one of her favorite pieces, a score composed as a tribute to the founders of Biribajan. There is certainly something special in being from Birabidjan. I even have a card which says, twice a Jew of the Soviet Union. I bought it in Moscow on Arbat Street six years ago. It means that in addition to just being a Jew, you were born in Birabidjan. This is special. It's a feeling shared by other expats from the Jewish Autonomous Region. David Wasserman used to be Biribijan's deputy mayor before he left the city nine years ago. His friend Vladimir Rottenstein was the head of a local TV station and arrived at the same time. Now they're both planning to write a detailed history of the city. But in the meantime, they both miss their hometown so much that they set up an organization to keep everyone who'd emigrated in touch with each other. Now their group meets several times a year and organizes special trips, so everyone gets a chance to be involved. I can say that the Birovichan community, which we call all Israeli community, is very big. It has about 15,000 people. We know where everyone lives, we know the phone numbers, and we call each other, we invite each other to the weddings and childbirth. We organized bus trips, for example in June there was a meeting in Marlot, and there was also a bus from Dimona with people from home. So about 100 to 150 expats take part in these all Israeli get-togethers. We never forget Biro Bajan. Despite their affection for their hometown, not many of our Israeli expats were planning on coming back. But there's one man in Biribajan who's taken the opposite journey. Rabbi Mordecai Shiner sits and reads with his four sons every day. The boys and their two sisters are homeschooled. It's a duty he shares with his wife, Sarah. She and her daughters are busy making kosher cakes. Not easy when there are no kosher food outlets in the whole city, and each batch needs special preparation. I've been invited to visit the family home of the city's chief rabbi, Mordecai. He came here from Israel six years ago, and he's been fighting to reconnect Birabazan's Jews with their religious roots. It's not been an easy task. Birabazan is still a very secular city, but with the help of the community center and local administrators, Mordecai has seen more people attending his synagogue and embracing Jewish life. There's barely enough room for the whole family in their second floor apartment, but the Shiners welcomed us with open arms, asked us to wait while they baked us cakes, and even treated us to a little home concert. It's taken the family time to adjust to life in Russia, but both Mordecai and Sarah feel that they're making good progress. There is a phrase that can be roughly translated into Russian like this. Nobody expects you to make a miracle. Just do what you do best, and the Supreme Being always knows what will come out of it. I do what I can. At first it was very difficult. The weather and the mentality was different, and I found it very hard. It took around a year before it became easier. It's not like it was in Israel, but it's our home now, and I'm used to living here. They're both very well known. Mordecai and his wife are regular guests on local television program Yiddish Kite, which means Jewish life. 
Every week, the show deals with a different part of Jewish culture or highlights a religious holiday. After filming, it's rushed to the studio to be edited in time for the Friday broadcast. Tatiana has presented it for three years, and each episode always starts the same way. Shalom. Shalom, and welcome to Jewish Life. You can watch our program every Friday. Watch us and you'll know everything about Jewish life and traditions. I see people approaching me and saying, at last, you came to us. We watch you. Will your program show us? And this is out in the villages. In the city, too, there are very few people I don't know. And everyone knows me. Jewish culture seems to have a real future in the region. But everything Birabajan is today, it owes to places like this. And without this small community, the capital wouldn't exist. This is the village of Valtgain. When settlers began to arrive here 80 years ago from across the Soviet Union, this was the first place they came to, and where the Jewish story of this region really began. Moussia Rak has lived here for more than half a century. She runs the village museum now, but was head of a collective farm for many years and still owns one in the community. She told me that the name Vault Game means house in the forest, and back when the first settlers arrived, that was literally all there was. But when her husband and his family came here in 1931, they didn't mind the swarms of blood-sucking insects and harsh continental climate for one particular reason. Freedom. They were able to work on their own piece of land. People who came here were hard-working. Some of them left because they could not endure such toil. But many stayed. Joseph Stalin sold these Soviet Jews a dream. They would have their own land, a place to follow their beliefs and traditions, where Yiddish would be the official language. That dream was never fully realized, but the settlers survived Stalin's purges and his attempts to eliminate Yiddish culture. And their decades of hard work laid the foundations for today's modern Jewish autonomous region. Now this is normally a really quiet village, but in a place with such strong Jewish roots, sometimes the whole community comes together to celebrate its heritage. And that can get pretty noisy. This was the first big celebration after Jewish New Year, and the gang really was all there. Matvey and his group got the crowd going, Tatiana was taking the opportunity to catch some interviews for her latest broadcast. And organizers had laid on a display of Jewish books and symbols for the children. Even our newspaper artist, Sap, had made the journey from Birabajan to show off his paintings. But Tatiana's real job for the evening was to get the audience ready for the grand finale. There are young people in our ensemble. They grow up and sing. They like to sing Jewish songs very much. Welcome, Child's Ensemble Ilanot. These big events are sponsored by local Jewish organizations and the performers travel throughout the Jewish Autonomous Region to give even the smallest places a chance to join in the fun. This dance troupe are drawn from five different local schools and with a lot of proud parents in the audience, they are always going to get a rapturous reception. But the warmth of the people here is typical. The Jewish population in this region may not be large, but it's a thriving, welcoming community in a place where less than a century ago, there was nothing at all. <laughs> 